Welcome to the Now, I'm Ashley. It's Friday, that means it's almost time for a weekend full of video games. Heads up, couple of things, just some quick housekeeping. First of all, Monday is a holiday for us. That means we won't be in the office and we won't be doing news on Monday, but we will be back bright and early in the office Tuesday morning to bring you a Spider-Man review talk. Uh, also, hey, a little bit of self-promotion here, but I just had some uh, some sweet ass shirts launching in the Rooster Teeth store, and I think you should check them out because they're pretty dope. So I'm gonna put a little card in the video like right here or something so you can go click and you can buy some sweet ass shirts about video games and space, because I like it. Anyway, now that I got that out of the way, had to do it, couldn't help myself, let's talk about the news. Uh, after the tragic shooting at a Madden tournament last weekend, EA says it's donating a million dollars to the victims and the publishers, setting up a fund called the Jacksonville Tribute, where others can contribute as well. EA says the contributions will go to the victims, including the families of Taylor Robertson, Elijah Clayton, and others who were affected. They're also holding a special live stream next Thursday, September 6th. In a post, EA wrote, we've heard from so many of you that you would like to support the victims and to show that this horrific event will not define us, but only serve to make our community stronger. Obviously, the whole thing last weekend was a horrific situation. The two Madden players, Taylor Robertson and Elijah Clayton, were killed after another player opened fire. He later killed himself. The Verge reported that three EA employees were at the event. They were not harmed. But 11 other people were. In a new interview, the developers of Bioware's upcoming sci-fi game Anthem said that while the game is something new, it'll still have a lot of aspects of a traditional Bioware game. In an interview with GamesIndustry.biz, director John Warner said the game is not a departure, it's the continued evolution of our craft and our technique. So it's been a big question among gamers, considering that Anthem is kind of an online multiplayer game, appears to be quite a bit different from Bioware's usual work, and at E3, they made pains to say, no, 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 it's still a typical Bioware game, just you know, multiplayer-ish. So it's been a little bit confusing. Warner added, I think once players get their hands on it and dive in, they're going to find a world that is well-realized and full of rich characters that you're going to want to get to know, and you'll be the hero of your own story. And honestly, that is the heart and soul of a Bioware experience. He said the development team includes the core group that made the Mass Effect trilogy, the original Mass Effect trilogy, and it also includes members who worked on Dragon Age Inquisition and some people from Mass Effect Andromeda, but let's not hold that against them. The game is set to release next year, February 22nd. We'll be getting a lot more information about the game, headed up to its launch. Hopefully it will clear up some of the confusion that people have about what the game is and what the game isn't. Rocket League announced its new Fortnite-style Rocket Pass system, which is releasing next week. If you're not familiar, basically a system where you pay a fee to unlock additional cosmetic rewards. The first pass will cost $9.99, runs from September 5th through November 26th. It'll have cosmetic rewards that include experience boosts, car skins, crate keys, and a whole bunch more. There are 29 free rewards that you can get just from playing. The premium level has another 70 rewards. Again, very similar to the Fortnite Battle Pass system. Oh, and uh, Rocket League was also recently added to Xbox Game Pass too, so there's that. It'll have crossplay with PC and Switch, but and no PlayStation 4 kids, as we know, Sony not playing nice with everyone right now. The developer behind the underwater survival game Subnautica has announced an expansion for the game called Below Zero. The studio, Unknown Worlds, calls it a standalone expansion to the original game, which came out earlier this year for PC and Mac, been in early access for a while, scheduled to release later this year for Xbox One, PlayStation 4. The developer says that the Below Zero expansion is set in an icebound region of planet 4546b. After the events of the original game, and they shared some pictures of an arctic looking concept. Pretty sweet. The studio said the expansion will keep the core gameplay mechanics like base building, open-ended exploration, that kind of thing. They're also looking at adding new mechanics like thermal management. They wrote, in the coming months, we will release an unfinished early version of Below Zero in early access. We will then begin releasing consistent content updates, carefully crafting the game based on your feedback, just like the original Subnautica. The creative team behind Binding of Isaacs announced something new in the series. Nicholas dropped a short teaser trailer for something called Binding of Isaac Repentance, but doesn't show much more than the title. I mean, there's also a knife stabbing the eye in Isaac. I mean, look, it wouldn't be a Binding of Isaac game without a little blood. The teaser also mentions PAX West 2018, which starts today along with their booth number, so maybe we'll be learning more throughout the weekend. We've got release dates for the final expansions of Shovel Knight, aka the gift that never quits given uh, until after 
the final expansions. A developer Yacht Club Games says that Shovel Knight King of Cards, a story-based expansion, as well as the multiplayer expansion Shovel Knight Showdown will be released on April 9th of next year. On that same date, a physical edition of the game for PlayStation 4 and Switch will be released in North America and Europe. That's not all though. They're also releasing an Amiibo 3 pack that same day that includes Plague Knight, Spectre Knight, and King Knight. The physical version of the game will cost $39.99 when it comes out, but until then, you can still buy the game for $24.99 digitally and you get the expansions for free when those release next year. It looks like Square Enix and the Chinese mega corporation Tencent are getting into business together. In a release, the companies say they've formed a strategic alliance that will include co-development of AAA titles based on new intellectual properties, the licensing of existing intellectual properties, and more. They didn't release any additional details on exactly what they've got planned, but definitely sounds like they're going to be making and distributing games together. Tencent senior vice president Stephen Ma said, "The alliance will enable us to couple our broad." range of internet service capabilities to Square Enix Group's superb creativity and provide our customers with unprecedented content experiences on a global basis. Square Enix President Yosuke Matsuda said this newly established alliance will be a strong boost to Square Enix Group's strategy to diversify our content offerings and expand access channels to a wider customer base. So really A plus corporate speak right there. It will be interesting to see as well though, especially since Tencent's running into some troubles with uh, China really locking down access to games that are made outside of China. So they're having some difficulties there. Really curious to see how Square Enix fits into everything else they've got going on. Walt Disney's dream for Disneyland was to have a pure, happy, family-friendly place for everyone to enjoy, and that's why they kept alcohol sales out of that park. Over at California Adventure, you can get drinks at Carthay Circle and have some vino during food and wine season, but Disneyland itself has always been dry to the public in honor of Uncle Walt. In fact, the only place you can buy booze is at the super restrictive Members Only Club 33. Like. Super restrictive. That's not gonna last much longer though. Next summer sees the Star Wars Park add-on known as Galaxy's Edge open to the public, and when it does, it's gonna have a cantina. And that cantina is not only going to have weird aliens playing music, because of course it will, right? It's going to have galactic cocktails. Beer and wine are also reportedly on the menu. They will strictly enforce their rule that alcohol can only be consumed inside the cantina, and it's likely the wait staff will be keeping a very close eye on patrons' tipsy levels. Wouldn't want any drunken brawls to break out into Risk getting their arms cut off and whatnot, you know, not at Disneyland anyway, but uh, still a lot of fun. I kind of want to go to that cantina. We may be seeing Blade again. Yes, Blade. At least that's what Wesley Snipes says. This would make a little bit of sense, actually. In today's superhero-filled cinematic world, it's easy to forget the first Marvel character to find big screen success was Blade. Before Spider-Man, before X-Men made it to the big screen, Blade was a big winner at the box office. A lot of people didn't even realize it was a comic-based thing. Wesley Snipes has claimed ownership over the character, appearing in two more Blade films, and always seeming very happy to talk about it. Vice asked him if we would ever see a Blade 4, and his answer, kind of surprising. He said a lot of conversations were going on right now, and added, we're very blessed to have the enthusiasm and interest in something coming from that world again. He added his team's come up with two projects involving Blade, and that Marvel's just trying to figure out which one they love the most. That could be anything, a new movie, TV series, web short, anything. Usually if an actor is talking publicly about something like that though, it means that maybe it's not quite happening and they're trying to get some momentum around it, you know, build that buzz. If talks were pretty serious, you'd probably see everyone shut up until the contracts were signed. But Wesley Snipes also has never really been one to give a crap about playing by traditional Hollywood rules, so it's possible maybe we'll see Blade return to the Marvel fold. If he's coming to the MCU, expect him to be defanged just a little bit. No way is Kevin Feige allowing an R-rated Blade into his franchise. What is this, Deadpool? No. Anyway, we'll see what happens. The Blade movies were ridiculous and a lot of fun. I like them a whole bunch. But it is true. A lot of people, when I saw those movies growing up, had no idea that they were even related to anything comic book related. They were just like, you know, vampire killing vampires. What's not to love? Anyway, that's all the news for this roundup, which leads us on our way to the weekend. Let us know what you think of all these updates in the comments down below to make sure you get all the crazy news from every corner of the internet every single weekday, except for next Monday, because we'll be on holiday. Like this video, and if you're new here, subscribe to the now. Also, make sure you check out store.roosterteeth.com or roosterteeth.com slash store. Either one will work and get some sweet-ass new shirts, because I'm real excited about them. We've been working on these for months.
cosmetic rewards that include experience boosts. Boosts, right? Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say, I was like, Boots doesn't seem right.